G'day fellas. One of the most common questions I get is what can I do to get better at Age of Empires? In this video, I'm going to be talking about seven simple things you can do to get better at Age of Empires 3. The first thing that you can do is find a civilization that suits your playstyle and that you're comfortable with. If you're a player who's aggressive, there's no point in playing a civilization like the Portuguese or the Dutch. These civilizations have naturally defensive attributes, and by being an offensive player and playing with this civilization, you're not synergizing with them and giving yourself the best opportunity to win your games. If you were to instead play a civilization like Spain, the Ottomans, or Russia, there would be a synergy between your playstyle and your civilization. So it's important that you first of all play a civilization that suits your playstyle. Second of all, you need to be comfortable with the civilization. There is no point in playing a civilization that synergizes well with your playstyle, but that you don't enjoy or that you're not comfortable with. It's difficult for me to explain what I mean by being comfortable with a civilization, but sometimes you just feel naturally attracted to playing a certain civilization. For me, when I began playing Age of Empires, the Dutch were my favorite civilization. I was incredibly comfortable on them. They also synergized incredibly well with my playstyle, as I'm a much more defensive player and reactive player. However, when I was playing the British, I would find that because I had to build 20 manor houses in the game, I would forget to rally the manor houses to resources and it would end up with me having heaps of idle villages. So I just never really felt comfortable with them. Once you've found the civilization that suits your playstyle and that you're comfortable with, it's important that you treat them as your main civilization, play them in team games as well as one versus one, and avoid playing other civilizations so that you can learn this civilization completely. You want to become a master of a single civilization instead of a jack of all trades. The second thing that you can do to get better at Age of Empires 3 is understand what strategy and tactics enemy civilizations are most commonly going to do against your selected civilization. First and foremost, you need to have an understanding of what a civilization is likely to do in any given game. As an example, if you're playing against the Portuguese, you can expect if there's trade routes or water, they're going to be looking at either taking the trade routes or the water, and then aging up to the fortress age as quickly as possible. Against a Dutch player, they might not make a single military unit until they've hit the third age. But against a British player who's had the nerve to build a trading post on their trade line, you can expect to see a hell lot more units out early from them. Because even though we can classify certain civilizations as rush civilizations and certain civilizations as economic civilizations, in certain matchups, different civilizations play the matchup differently. But we can make some general assumptions. As an example, Germany will fast fortress about 70% of games. Spain will fast fortress about 95% of games. Keep in mind that these numbers, even though they're high percentages, still means that these civilizations can fight in the second age. The third thing that you need to do is build a solid deck with multiple variants for each situation that your civilization is going to be coming up against. As an example, if you're playing the Ottomans, you need to have a deck for water maps and for water booming. These two things are very different. For a water map, it's important that you have a frigate and two caravels in your deck. For a water boom, it's important that you have schooners, fish market, and rendering plant. On some maps, you're going to want to be doing a water boom. On some maps, you're not going to be wanting to do a water boom, but it's still going to be important that you have a frigate. Say, for example, on a map like New England, where there's four trade posts. As an Ottoman player, it's likely that you're going to take all four of those trade posts in the early game. However, when you get to the mid game, you might be pushing into the enemy base and see that they put a barracks, a stable and five houses really close to the pond in New England. So what you're going to do is take your home city shipment point flag and you're going to drop it in that pond and you're going to ship a frigate. That way, you've still got the three card spaces in your decks because you didn't include schooners, fish market and rendering plant and you're still able to ship a frigate because it's a water map. If you're unsure about what cards to put in your deck, I encourage you to join the Discord server. I'll leave a link down in the description below, but we've got a lot of good resources, including my deck picks. So if you're unsure about what cards to put in, I encourage you to get on there and have a look as there's plenty of deck picks to check out. The fourth thing that you can do to get better at Age of Empires is learn what the most competitive build orders are and replicate them. While some people might criticize you for following a build order very strictly, calling you a build order bot, a build order exists for a reason. This is a refined strategy that has been developed. It's often the most efficient way to do something to achieve a certain goal, whether that's achieving a military strategy in the early game or an economic strategy in the early game. A build order guarantees a way for you to achieve something every single game the same way. Now, that doesn't mean that you should stick to the exact same build order and do the exact same thing every single game. What that means is you need to find the most competitive build orders and then vary these build orders to be flexible. Now, depending on who you ask, they might 
give you a different explanation of what a build order is. For me, I like to go incredibly in depth with a build order. An example of a build order that I can use is the Blueberry Fast Industrial. This was a build order that I went incredibly in depth to with a channel called the Battle Brothers. I'm going to leave a link down in the description if you're interested in watching the video, but it's an hour long video where I talk in depth about how to achieve that same build order. This is an example of a build order that you need to learn to be able to replicate. Even if that means going into a skirmish game, practicing against an easy AI and just trying to pull off a game where you've got similar timings that I've got. It enables you to benchmark yourself and see where you're at against me and also increases your mechanics. It's important that you have a build order for every single situation. Now I'm not saying that you need 500 build orders, that's outrageous, but I expect at least 499. No, but in all seriousness, realistically you should have a build order against aggressive civilizations and at the very least a build order against economic civilizations. The fifth thing that you can do to get better is understanding what your win condition is and have a plan on how you're going to achieve it. Are you playing as the Russians? Well, your win condition might be rushing. You might say, I'm going to ship 13 Strelitz, I'm going to ship 5 Cossacks and 4 Cossacks, and at the same time, I'm going to build Musketeers from my blockhouse. My win condition is that I'm going to make my opponent resign before I run out of units. But let's say your rush isn't successful. You do run out of units. You've lost that win condition. Now you need to have a plan on adapting. Now you need to move forward. So what's your next plan? Okay, well, my mid game plan is that I'm going to age up to the third age. I'm going to put down a second town center and I'm going to begin to train villages out of both of the town centers. At the same time, I'm going to continue making musketeers. I'm going to upgrade them and I'm going to ship two falconets from the home city. I'm also going to build a stable and start training opernix and raid the enemy like crazy. This should hopefully bring me back into the game so that my two town centers will eventually begin to outscale the enemy because I'm going to be killing their settlers. Because I fell so far behind in the early game, because my rush failed, it means that I really can't even push in at the third age. So what I'm going to do is aim to hit the fourth age. I'm going to ship both of my factories and then I'm going to ship heavy cannons from my home city. And then I'm going to push the enemy with my musketeers upgraded to guard and attacking with my heavy cannons. That's my win condition. And that's how I'm going to achieve it. Each civilization has a different win condition and obviously a different plan to go along with it. It's important that you identify the strength of your chosen civilization and your win condition. Often it can depend on the matchup that you're playing against as you'll often need to consider the enemy civilization. And because there's 16 civilizations, there's an incredible amount of variation. So it's impossible for me to go over every single matchup in this video. But just to give you an idea, let's say you're playing as the French and you're up against the Ottomans. You can expect that you're gonna be up against either a rush or a fast fortress in the early game. So your win condition is that you're going to repel the rush and then in the third age once you've aged up you're going to be shipping your falconets and you're going to be pushing with a mass of skirmishers and dragoons and hopefully be able to overwhelm the opponent if it ends up going late game you're going to look to hit the fourth age and spam gendarmes because the enemy anti-cavalry isn't the strongest it's important that when you're looking at the load screen you understand the civilization that you're against the map that you're on whether it's got trade routes and whether it's got water and then formulate a plan and how you're going to achieve that plan understand your win condition and then focus on achieving the goals that you set for yourself. The sixth thing that you can do to get better at Age of Empires is to scout more. It might seem like a cop-out or even something too simple to say as something that you can get better at, but quite honestly, a huge weakness of every single player below 1700 is that they don't scout what their opponent is doing in the early game. They're not scouting for a forward barracks. They're not scouting for a stable underneath the town center. They're not scouting for 700 coin underneath the town center as the first shipment in the second age. Scouting is imperative and it's important that you understand the time of when to scout. Key scouting timings depend on the matchup and the civilization that you're playing against. But just as an example, if you're playing against the Russians, you should be scouting between the 3 minutes 30 mark and the 4 minute 30 mark for a forward blockhouse. If you're against the Ottomans, you should be scouting for forward villages at the 3 minute mark. If you're up against the British, you should be scouting underneath their town center at the 4 minute 40 mark to be checking what their first shipment is. If you see wood, you can be certain that they're going to be doing a mana boom. If you see coin, you can be certain that they're going to be hitting you with a double rax musket rush. By scouting what your opponent is doing, it allows you to be as greedy as possible because it tells you what they're doing. If you know that your opponent isn't building units, great, you don't need to build units either. You can be more greedy, and by being more greedy, you increase the size of your economic curve. Treasures that provide native scouts are incredibly powerful, so if you see these in the early game, it's important that you do your best to try and pick them up because they allow you to be having permanent map hacks that are legal. The seventh thing that you can do to get better at Age of Empires 3 is construct more military production buildings in the mid game. One of the most common mistakes I see newer players making is that they continue to float resources in the mid game. Often I'll see 2,000 or 3,000 resources floated. Now this isn't a problem when
when it gets to late game because these resources can be used very quickly. But in the mid game, it's important that you've got as many units on the field as you possibly can. And when you're floating a thousand food and a thousand coin, these resources could be used on units that you could have out on the field right now. And by building more military production buildings, it mitigates the fact that you continue to build up these resources. It's understandable that as a new player, your skills aren't going to be as refined as a more experienced player. And so a way that you can make up for that is by building more military production buildings. That way, instead of queuing up 20 skirmishes in one barracks, you can queue up 10 skirmishes in two barracks, or five skirmishes in four barracks. Now it's important that when you hear my advice, you don't just go into the game and build 17 barracks and then wonder why you lost. It's important that you don't flood the map with military production buildings. What's important is that you continue military production. And if you notice that you're building up an excess of coin or food, don't be afraid to drop down an extra barracks or an extra stable. I hope that these seven tips will help you get better at Age of Empires 3. If you've got any questions about any of the content that I've covered in this video, I encourage you to leave a comment down below, as I quite regularly go through the comments and will respond to them if there's any questions there. Other than that, I hope that you've been able to take something away from this video. Thank you for watching.